Hi guys, <laughs> welcome back to my channel. It's me Theodora Mugetzi and I know it's been a while. In fact, my last video was about last year, um, this time. And um, so this is a life update, but it's also a q and A. I I don't have much about my life that I want to share. <laughs> Um, so I'll focus on the Q&A and maybe just talk a little bit about why I stopped doing YouTube uh, while I'm pregnant. Um, so I think I've alerted a lot on my Instagram and on my stories that my pregnancies are generally very difficult. I vomit a lot. Um, with the, the last pregnancy, I had a low-lying placenta, which was very painful. So I was placed on bed rest by the doctor. And so, Ukenzi uh, Makeup, Ukenzi YouTube was just not on the cards. Um, but baby Aruka, our last born, turned six months uh, a few days ago. So yeah, we can start gradually get back to working. Uh, we also moved cities within that time. Um, and so, so much has been happening within our lives. We have not focused on Word Life or Seasons Church uh, within a long time, but I do feel God um, downloading some events for the Word Life conference, and I'll communicate that as, as time goes. Um, so yeah, let's get into the q and A. I I actually asked these questions on Instagram a while back and been wanting to record this, uh, but I think the time is right. Let's get into it. First question, I loved it. From your own experience, how um, is it being in ministry as a woman? <laughs> Girl, I think anything as a woman is hard in South Africa, be it corporate, be it ministry, be it um, academia. Um, men always feel that we need to prove ourselves, we need to work extra hard. Um, so being in ministry as a woman has been challenging, it is challenging. I mean, you know, when you see major conferences that's for both male and female, um, you hardly see a woman's face on the poster. It's as if we need to have our own conferences, our own, um, you know, events where we get to prove ourselves. And so it's very difficult. You still need to prove yourself. Um, I also think we get judged um, far more strongly than men in terms of uh, our dress code, my daughter's in the room, so if you are in the background, it's okay. <laughs> uh, I think we get judged uh, way more strongly in terms of dress code, what we do, the events in our lives, where uh, men generally, things would, um, that people would let things slide for them. Women, um, we expected just to, 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 to live on a higher standard. Um, I would say if you're a woman in ministry, ask God for direction and yeah, pave your own way, start your own thing. What are some of the challenges that you faced in ministry? Lots of challenges. Being a woman, one. Being young, one. Um, South Africa, our environment and our atmosphere is just not charged to support the young preacher, to support the young pastor. Um, you expected to submit, you expected to... Um, speak when they tell you to not when god tells you to you're supposed to move when people tell you to not when god tells you to so support um people being confident in the fact that you are called young as you are female as you are a uh, financial fi financial challenges um it's a lot because you want to put up an event and have people come to it and have their lives being changed um so sometimes you're putting all this money up and you're not getting any, not that we do it for the money, but it is expensive to put up an event. Um, and you don't want people to pay for these things because you want people to come and have their lives transformed. Um, so finances are a big thing. To record YouTube, it's money. You need to have a certain camera, a certain phone, certain lightning. Um, so finances, definitely a huge, huge challenge. Um, also, um, getting people to be vulnerable with you, because um, some people think just because you speak or you preach or you teach, um, you're unapproachable. So drawing that line between the pastor, the teacher, and just having an approachable demeanor um, for people to come to you, because the essence of ministry is not this. The essence of ministry is being accessible, to people for counseling for prayer to hold their hands uh, during tough times and to laugh with them in the good times 
Uh, number three, what was your greatest challenge? What was the greatest challenge you faced during COVID and how did you overcome? I think uh, there was two for us. It was, uh, I was unemployed at that time. So was my husband and we were running a small church uh, at the time, Seasons Church. We did try and continue with Seasons, uh, but as time went, uh, we felt God said, it's okay, you've done your part, you've done the food puzzles, you've done online, now kids just rest. Um, within that time, with both of, both of us not working, we saw the hand of God so much, with so much provision, money just coming into our account. We had fun, just like every other family. We made pizza, we had food, God just provided. Within that time, I was also headhunted, um, so I started working um, in the middle of COVID. Um, and to me, for somebody who had been out of corporate for a very long time after having my firstborn, that was a blessing. So yeah. Um, what keeps me motivated? What keeps you motivated? I think... In different seasons different things um, right now my kids um, being a mother that they would be proud of somebody that they would look up to somebody that they would uh, want to role model so definitely my kids and it won't always be my kids in the next five years it could be something else a few years back it was something else so right now in this moment my children my growth Okay, I like this question. What will your main focus be? Growing the numbers or making an impact? Um, I've been doing ministry since I was 15 years old. Before there was YouTube, before there was um, social media, any sense of social media. So it's never been numbers. It's always been impact. Uh, my friends and I would always say we preach for a wall filled with 10 people as hard as we preach to a walk fault with a hundred people. So it's not numbers, it's impact. It's changing that one life. The Bible says that Jesus left the 99 for the one. But guys, numbers are important. We want the numbers. We're living in a digital um, era. Um, so yeah, numbers are, are nice. So like, subscribe, follow, tell your friends, give us the numbers. Uh, because the more numbers we have, the more people we get to impact. Number six, do you have a specific routine you follow since you are a mom again? Um, it's not easy to keep routines. I'm currently in a space where my routine is completely broken, but generally I am a routine person. Um, so it would be wake up, pray, exercise, prepare the kids for school. That would be my morning routine. Um, so I am a reader of the 5am club. So I believe in rising up early, doing your meditation. To me, that would be prayer and then my exercising and then going um, on with my day. But yeah, I'm a very routine person. I'm a very scheduled person. I'm a very... I, I'm a planner of notes. I want to know how my day is going to look like, how my week's going to look like, how my month's going to look like if I could. Um, my favorite scripture, uh, my favorite scripture, I think 2 Timothy, I hope it's, I'm quoting it correct, 2 Timothy 2.12. Um, God is faithful even when we are faithless for he cannot forsake himself. Um, he's faithful when we are faithless. When we have no faith, he's still faithful because he cannot forsake himself. Me, I'm God. Um, there's also one in the book of Psalms where God says, For you have loved righteousness and hated evil. Therefore, God, your God, has exalted you even above your peers by giving you the oil of gladness. Um, so God will exalt you and... And, and, and I love the fact that with the oil of gladness, you know, he will anoint you with the oil of gladness, especially in this time that we are living in where mental health is an issue, depression is an issue. So just getting that anointing of the oil of gladness, even when you're going through difficult seasons, it is a blessing. There's so many, but I think those two um, I love. Uh, the next one, what made you love your hubby? enough to marry him okay so we were friends for two years before we dated officially um, so for me the friendship was important um, I doubt I would have <laughs> been comfortable with dating him if we were not good friends so the friendship was important a marriage based on friendship is, is always good because even in those difficult seasons it's the friendship that pulls you through 
um, but also I was comfortable with him man I'd been on dates I'd spoken to guys I was just comfortable it just felt like home you know there was a level of comfort a level of not pretending a level of home a sense of family um, when I was with him that I had not felt um, with other guys the marriage thing must always come up <laughs> um, 11 how did you know you were ready for marriage girl I was 30 years old I had been praying um, so it was time it really was time um, 12 and this is the last one this is the last question it says any suggestions of little things um, you can do to help when when you have a newborn any suggestions of little things that one can do when you have a newborn um i would say routine routine helps the baby it helps the mommy um for me girl i give my baby itami ispaza pacifier it helps me it keeps the baby calm um, community you need people around you and whatever that community looks like for you it's fine whether it's taking the child to daycare whether it's ukoko grandmother whether it's a hands-on daddy cousins uh, just have community around you to help you it takes a village to raise a child and yes that village looks differently for all of us but get the help um call your pediatrician um yeah uh, but for me i think when it comes to kids community is everything <laughs> so that's the first video we're going to leave it here i got a lot of suggestions of topics that you guys would like me to cover and so we'll do that in our next video thank you so much for joining me don't forget like subscribe and share Mwah.